Apa khabar semuanya? Hi, my name is Vincent and welcome back to my lesson regarding lesson 4, basic part of data analytics, HR retention prediction. And last week, uh, the previous course, we have talked about, about viewing the data. Now let us try to explore the data, alright? But to explore the data, let us try to come up with a subject which is to perform the leading employees. Alright, so I'm going to get you through there step by step. And then in this sector, you're going to learn more about visualizations, how you can visualize things using keyboard and map properly. So if you don't know from my previous tutorial regarding stock prediction and analysis, map properly is an extension library from for Python that actually focuses on visualizing charts. And the best thing about Map.lib is that it's very comprehensive, that it's very customizable, like there are a lot of things to customize. And Seaborn is basically an extension of this Map.lib that actually already assumes such customization so that it makes it simplifies your process in order to generate the chart rather than using Map.lib directly. Okay, so it will be easier if I uh, if you can take a look at the demonstration. Okay, the first thing is that we want to import both Seaborn Map.lib and to also to put uh to command not Python notebook and insert the magic Map.lib in time. Alright, so import Seaborn as S and S to get the Seaborn uh Seaborn uh, standard convention and map import map plot leave as okay we want pipe plot in general so let's call it map plot as plt and finally we want to put the uh, attention to the Python notebook that we are going to showcase our map plot leave so map plot leave six times map plot leave in line Let's see, that's it. Try and run it. There's no error, so it means that you did it properly. If you did C bond with S, then it's actually wrong because there's no model that for C bond. So that's how you know whether you set it properly or not. So there's no error, then give it B and move on. Okay, so now we want to get the count of people that leave and not. But first of all, let us try to um, yeah, to see, to count how many people that live or not, and how do we do this? Well, very simple food is that you can DF, which is our data frame where we store our data, and then we put left. What is left? Left is a column that we want to see whether a person is living or not. If you run this, then we can see bunch of one and bunch of zeros. But the question is, how many ones and how many zeros? So there's a quick method how you can do that is called value count. Okay, so value count and then brackets and you can do it. So you can see 0 is 1148 and 2571. Okay. And you can store it in a in a variable where you say our uh, left counts, for example, equals to get uh, value counts, so you store it here. And afterwards, you want to visualize it using a pie chart. So what you do, what you will do is that you can do PLT, which map probably pie plot, and you can do pie. So click on tab, there's no auto completions, and you can do it. Shift and tab so that you know what to put, and you know that you need to put lab counts because the X is here. Um, and the other things that you can put is well, let's try and run this first. So we can run it and this. But there's something missing. We don't know what is the blue color. We don't know what is the green color. So what we can do is that, well, we can sort of um, do this. So there's a labels there. You see there's a labels method here. Uh, sorry, labels um, adjective here that you can put as an argument. So comma label. And and maybe we can put left counts dot index. So basically, the index is 
the 0 and 1 as you can see here this is how we know that is that we can try and print it out if that comes so once we run it you can see this so this is the values 11428 and 3571 and 0 and 1 is the length of the index okay so basically this means that we want to get the index However, 0 and 1 is not intuitive, but we do know that 0 means not leaving and 1 means leaving. So what we could do is that we could uh, we could just do it directly, I mean cut it out that 0 means not leave and 1 means leave. And we run it again and there you go. So there are 1, 1, 4, 2, 8 people that do not leave and 3, 5, 7, 1 that leave. However, see here that we have the output that is very weird that we say map properly. What is this? So basically this is just a message that your pie chart has been generated and which is basically the blue color portions of this pie chart and and the green color portion of this pie chart and to combine them together to create a formal pie chart. But this message is not intuitive, so we can leave it out just by any well color, semicolon. And we run it again, and there you go, it's gone. So what it means is that uh, this semicolon says that, oh, if you have a message, please just pull it B, uh, don't need to show it to me at the console, and leave it on the internal side of the program. Okay? So leave out of the way, no need to print it out. Now we move on to getting the data, and employees that leave and do not leave, and getting the shape and number of these people. So how do we do that? Well. We can make another um, data frame that says let the end or those people that do not leave do not have the end. Well, probably this might make any sense, but it, it does the job. And how we can do it is that we want basically we want the let that do not have the um, that do not have the um, that have the yeah that have the value of one. So we want to know we want to get the df that have the f left value equals to one. So this is basically that we want to create, we want just to take this part of value and once we run it, for example, let's give it a comment first. If we run it, then there you go. Nothing happened. And if you try to clean it out, then you can see that it is average. But if you see here, let me scroll it down, you can see that all the left is now 1. It's because that when you are doing indexing, it's basically you put a condition here. I want the conditions that my left value of this data frame is equal to 1. And and basically I want to get the df that have these values of equal to 1 so it's represented in a 2 or 4 manner. well it might be a bit tough but it's called um, column indexing and it's a very simple way once you get and understand it to actually bit filtering in Python notebook okay so moving on, then how about not left the app? Well, simply put, it's the same thing. Run the same thing. But instead of equals to 1, it will be equals to 0. Okay, then I can get the shapes of this by just putting up. Say of left the app. And then command left the app. Shape. And then do the same thing with not left the app. And run it. And now you see that it's printed here. Okay, so now we have these two and we're going to use it in our uh, calculation. Okay, so now we want to get a distribution of the inflection level. So in this case, I would like to introduce to you about CPON. So CPON has a formula that is, um, let me refer to it. Um, yeah, Sibon has a formula that called um, chart. Yeah, so you can just tap and you can see that there is 
path plot and distribution of variable. But in this case, we can use path plot. Uh, I'll show you path plot first. Then afterwards, maybe you can do this plot. And then we can just leave value. Or we just go straight to this plot. Okay, this plot. Then I can put the data, and afterwards I can put yeah many other kind of uh, labels and so on. But just we do this plot first. So this plot, the simplest one is that if you want to get um, the same pressure level, you have the F, then satisfaction level. F for auto completion, and then run it, and it will give you a very nice um, distribution. You can do um, colon, semicolon, so that we don't see the message, and that's it. But we want to make it something like this, so what do we do? Well, what we could do is that we want to create a figure. If you want to put two charts side by side, you can a figure. A figure is basically this whole uh, box that could contain many kind of different axes of charts. Then, um, then you run. So, so if I run this, what you can see is just two empty data. So this one we need to copy data. So what we can do is that if let's say there's one satisfaction level, we can do the same thing with this. So copy paste, and then I can see the that is x e a x. So I can identify a x equal to a x one. What is a x one? This one is here, so basically I'm identifying it so that it will uh, contain, uh, it will occupy the spot of AX1 that has been created in the figure. Okay, so sorry for these jargons, but it will make sense to you basically it's a, it's a compartment, and where you put your box in the compartments is up to you by labeling them with the name of the compartment. So AX1 and AX is basically a way how you label the compartment okay and we can do the same thing with the not left the f only that i want to put it at x2 so i run it and there you go you can see the that the left side is the one that do not uh, that leave the company and the right side is the one that not left the company okay and I can actually tweak this with a big size. I can do 10, 10 and you see that it's uh, less wider. And I can do like a vertical by just um, 211, 212. Let's see. There we go, 211 and 212. So basically, 211 is uh, basically if I put one or two, so it just identify sort of the orientations of the compartments. So it it saves the spots. So I can do this the same thing with many different kinds of uh, variables and last iterations, number of projects, average money of time spent company. And I can do the same thing with a pie chart also. So I do value counts and afterwards I create the pie chart as what I have mentioned to you. And just to make sure that it occupies the axis by using ax1.py. So MapProfit has everything for you and do the same thing with the departments as well. So in the end, the profile that I found is in so much. So this is the profile of the people that left. And conclusion, we need to find out maybe there's a high pay and low paying jobs. So maybe we should find maybe that the high pay are more likely to be overworked, low pay are more less likely to be overworked, or maybe more underworked as for the quit and so on. So we want to find out this. Uh, relationships okay and we also understand the features that matter in this expository why people leave because of the last iteration number projects and salary so for example if i go number projects you see that it has to be a lot of people yeah sort of that they are more under under work here at the two you see the, the peak and slightly more overwork six or seven and this one is quite stable like three and four so three and four might be the uh, a good number of projects. With that, I would like to move on to correlation analysis in the next video. Please share your comments. If there's anything that you do not understand, and please give your feedbacks. With that, thank you. Sampai jumpa lagi. See you in the next lesson.